shot at me at point blank range. And it literally is a miracle. It's literally a miracle of God that I, he missed. Um, the dashboard of my car was blown out. And yet my car still was able to, I was able to back out in reverse and get away from him. He jumped on the hood of my car and um, for some miracle, it never drove after that, but I was able to like back out of the space and move forward and he fell off my car and ran into the wall. Welcome to Waking Up to Life with Rabbi Josh. 18 minutes in a podcast built around conversations with people in the community who have found enlightenment in their lives. While these events may not seem life-changing, they will reveal moments that shape the way my guests see the world. This conversation and insights from Jewish tradition may change your life as well. And if not, it's just 18 minutes with me. So l'chaim to life. Today on the show, we welcome Allison Wall Parr, an attorney, a mom, and a friend of mine who is a member of our suburban Detroit community. Allison, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rabbi Josh. I'm so happy to have you with us, excited to hear your stories. And I know that you have a few moments in your life that really have changed the way you have perspective on the world. One of them happened in the parking lot at Somerset, and the other is with regard to your father. Share just a little bit of those stories with us. Okay, so the, I think the first thing you alluded to was um, an incident that happened to me about um, 15 years ago um, in Somerset Mall's parking lot. I was, um, I was a victim of an attempted kidnapping and carjacking, um, and it's a crazy story that I don't often tell, but um, I was, I struggled. I was driving a minivan at the time. I struggled at the door. And when I was able to, um, and the person had a gun at my face, um, it was an older man, and I struggled to get my elbow to the horn. And that horn, that, that noise of the horn, you know, caused that one second of me to um, overtake him in my door, shut my door. And as I was shutting my door, he, um, shot at me at point blank range. And it literally is a miracle. It's literally a miracle of God that I, he missed, um, the dashboard of my car was blown out and yet my car still was able to, I was able to back out in reverse and get away from him. He jumped on the hood of my car and, um, for some miracle, it never drove after that, but I was able to like back out of the space and move forward and he fell off my car and ran into the mall. Hmm. Um, it was a big thing and people might remember it was a 37 year old victim. That was me. And I'm, I survived. I'm here to tell about it. So it's interesting. You, you talk about that. I can even hear in your voice, the emotion that is surrounding the memory. And yet you have chosen not to have that be the moment in life that has shaped you. Instead, you explained to me that it was the death of your father that really left a more lasting impact. So tell us that story. So it's interesting because I feel fine about the incident and I feel really affirmed and powerful to have survived that. It really feels like a, when I talk about it, you're hearing emotion because it's a PTSD feeling. It's emotionally, I, I feel great. It really affirmed my own personal power. But really enlightenment, I think for me, when I was 21, my dad died suddenly of a car accident, um, had a heart attack while he was driving and smashed into a tree. And when you lose your loved one, I came from a really close family, a chaos filled family, but really close. And um, it, it just was a sudden, it, ca it caused me to reevaluate who I am, how I see things. And I was thinking about your question and I, I think three things, it left me with three thoughts. Um, one, the weird part is I could see my dad more clearly after he was gone. And I considered that really a blessing. Um, and it helped ground me. And two, um, the way I dealt with it is the loss was mine and not his. And I felt better knowing he was somewhere better. And I could, I could move on and handle the loss. Like, for some reason, that's comforting to me. Um, and the second, my life was my own. And there I was, I was going to 
have it how I wanted it. And how I wanted it was a fantastic family and um, a great home life and put all my all into um, my community and my family, my home life. And that's, it's really powerful. Like I don't begrudge making dinner. I love it. I love being at the table with my family. I don't begrudge doing laundry. Um, I went to graduate school. I went to law school and yet I still love being home, taking care of my family. I, I, so. So it's interesting to hear you talk about the story at any age. It's, of course, very difficult to lose a parent. It's a sad moment. But at 21, in those formative years, it must have taken a, a little bit of time for you to both deal with the pain of loss and then come to this new realization that you did. Did, did that happen suddenly or was it something oh, that you evolved? I, well, my father, um, Arthur Wall, he was larger than life attorney in the community. Um, he just was a huge personality. and. Um, there was so much chaos that ensued from his sudden death with his law partners, his second wife, just chaos, chaos. And the way I dealt with it was just really becoming my own person and, my, and strengthening my own relationship with him because it was totally personal. Now I didn't have to deal with all the external. And it, um, as all that was going on, it forced me to look inward, I think, because after his sudden death, there was court battles. And um, so, yeah, it was, it, it, over the course of the next two years, I would say, um, is how I, it wasn't a lightning bolt, but it was a, it, maybe it was a, a way to deal with the pain, I guess. And was there a methodology that you used to make that happen? Did you work uh, through therapy, oh, I, I, with meditation? Uh, to be honest, no, maybe survival and no, no therapy, but I kind of feel like I've been blessed with just a positive attitude, maybe just, um, you know, you, you, um, you have to make the most, you know, my dad died at 54 and then I was almost killed. So, you, you know, you, you take all the blessings that life can give you that I just have a positive attitude. But it sounds to me, as I listen to you, that that's a, a conscious choice you've made. That's not something, yes, of course, you were given this blessing of being a, a very positive people. Every, every person who knows you knows that you approach life with a smile on your face. You're, you're always positive. But that must have been a choice that you made somewhere along the line to access that part of who you are. You know, you know what the choice was? I was surrounded by people who needed me to do better. My, my siblings, um, my aunts and uncles, and it, it was hard for everybody. So I just took it upon myself to be the, the rock, I guess. I, maybe that's, you know, my nature is that way. But when you look at helping others, I mean, you know, it's so fundamental to Takun alum, but if you want to help others, you, you have to rise up. Right. And, and, and in the begins, rising up, you feel so much better. And it begins with yourself, right? Uh, understanding that you had to approach this tragic moment in life and make a decision, and it moves you forward. And now, fast forward, so many years later, you're a mother, a wife, a professional, how has that attitude impacted the way you are raising your children and the way you come home every day to your husband? So I have three daughters and I feel like I have always wanted to demonstrate the kind of, I want to be the person I, I want them to be. I don't want to just give lip service. I want to, and I do genuinely feel good about myself and I believe daughters feel better about themselves when their mothers feel good about themselves. Um, you know, and I have the blessing of a phenomenal husband who affirms that. And he, he is a successful person who enables me to give my all to our family um, because he gives his all to his career. And that's been such a gift. And I have had friends over the years who begrudge like, oh, I'm stuck at home. I, I never felt that way. And it might be because, you know, I did lose my dad at 54. And I love being at home. And it's, you know what, this is crazy, but Rita Rudner, the, who married Tom Hanks, I remember long ago, I read an article and she said, you know, she was giving up her acting career to be a mom. And she said, I think everybody can have everything, just not at the same time. And that has really stuck with me. Like my time will come if I want to dive back into full force practicing law. That, that could come next. So you mentioned tikkun olam earlier, this idea that it's our job in Jewish tradition to find the pieces of God's light around the universe and, and bring them back together to create perfection. And it sounds like 
you have really taken that seriously, maybe not intentionally thinking that your work as a mom is healing the world, but are there, are, do, you, do you see that as sort of a personal intention to, to bring goodness into the world? Yeah, I, I feel so lucky that I would be irresponsible not to share with others. I feel like, um, you know, I recently, my 15 year old said like, I, I don't have, my life is, great. I don't have challenges to write about in this writing contest I want to write about. And I said, your challenge is because you have had the gifts of good, a good life, a healthy life, happy life, your challenge is to make it better for others. Like I really believe if you, you know, we could feel guilty that we, we are, you know, that we have a lot, material wealth, health. But if you have those things, it's your obligation to share with others who have less. And that's sure. the way I think you don't have to feel guilty. And some people would say that because of the experiences that you've had with your father, with that, that incident at the mall, that maybe it's, uh, it, it would be easy to dwell in the negative and to say, I'm cursed, I, I, I have only negative things happening. You're choosing to say, this has given me the opportunity to take my gifts and teach them to others, which is exactly the point of this podcast, to, to take a small moment and actually offer it to somebody else in the world. So what is the lesson that you want to offer to people who hear your story? Um, I feel like it starts with personal strength and personal confidence. Don't let others sway how you see yourself. And I think personal strength then flows out into being able to share your gifts and being positive. I don't rely on others to define me or my family or how to even parent. I never have. And I see so many pitfalls with not, not feeling good about yourself, not knowing what you're doing is right. And I feel like enlightenment starts with inner strength. And we are living in a world where there is a lot of need. I'm not just talking about the, the current events of COVID and Black Lives Matter, but we live in a world where there are so many people with so much and so many others who have nothing. And if we could find a way to access the strength that you're talking about and bring the courageousness that you've carried with you to others, that's a real blessing. Yeah. And, the, so, and, and having so much doesn't have to be material either. You know, having so much, I feel it starts within. Yeah, it's look, it's good. You joked earlier that you don't mind doing laundry. There are th things in life that maybe we don't love doing. It's it, We don't have to love every moment of our experience. But being able to see, as I'm hearing from you, the entire picture of being given the opportunity to change the world, we all have that. We just have to access it somehow. Yep. So let me ask you a question that will lead us to the end of this conversation. Do you think that you were destined for this? Have these events happened to you to put you in this position or do you feel that it's more of a random series of events that has landed you where you are and now you've just moved forward? I would say my father dying is is a random event. Um, how I dealt with it is a is a culmination of a childhood, maybe being the responsible one in the family. I'm not I'm not sure, but um, it's funny you ask this. The being um, shot at at Somerset Mall, um, it was told to me one year prior to that that um, you should know your father will be who had long passed away at that time. He died in 1990. Um, I was told that he would be with me to protect me in my minivan. And I really thought nothing of that. And I wow. thought, how nice. And I like to think of it now as, um, you know, there was something to that because it didn't make sense with that a person with a gun to my head missed. So, so to me, I hear the story yeah. and it, it sounds like uh -huh. the signs may be there in our world, but it takes courage to open our eyes, mm -hmm. to see them, to yeah. recognize them, and then really do what you've done, which is to take action, to make 
make something of those signs and the opportunities that we've been given. I am, I'm really inspired by your courage. I'm inspired by the story. I know that you think of it just as another day in the life of Alison Parr, but I think of this as a story that so many people need to hear and access for their own lives. But before we end, I, I have one question that's a simple question. Don't worry, it's not, a, it's not a terrible surprise, but it's something I've been asking all of my guests. I'm wondering, is there a book that you've read recently or a television show or a movie that you've been binging over these last couple of months that has impacted you that you would share with the audience? Well, I just finished Where the Crawdads Sing, and it's a beautiful book, and it's, I mean, I, I read lots of books that I find impactful and this is just fiction, but it's connection to the natural world in the marshes. Being stuck inside a lot with quarantine, it's, it's such a beautiful connection to the natural world. The description, um, she could be like an Audubon photographer with her words. And I, it, I, I recommend it because it makes you feel like you're outdoors. I love that you said that because two things are important. One is that uh, ability to go outside every day to find in Jewish tradition, we are taught there's a prayer uh, suggesting how lucky we are to be able to walk outside every day to see the natural world, but also in this time to be able to find something that uh, brings our spirit a little bit of joy, a little bit of uplift. It's really important. Uh, you have been a, an uplifting story today. I'm, I'm really so, so thankful for you to have agreed to come on the show, to share your story with us, and uh, to be a part of this moment. I'm happy to be part of it. Thank you. So, thank you to Allison Wolpar for sharing her life story, to all of you for watching and listening, to Waking Up to Life with Rabbi Josh. Thrilled to have spent these eight minutes together, 18 minutes together. I hope that I'll see you all next time. And until then, we'll hide.